Number two then from the 2018 Higher Maths Paper 2. Here we are, angle between vectors. But it's just the five marks this time. You probably feel a bit cheated this time round if you sat it, because normally that question is worth a lot more, because you have to find these vectors in the first place. But here they've given them, so some of the marks have gone already. Ah oh well, what does it say? It even breaks it down. It says, find u dot v, what's the scalar product of u and v for one mark? Well, to do that, when it's a scalar multiplication, the answer will just be a single number. So yes, you multiply the corresponding components, but you add them up, you don't leave them separate. So it's negative 1 times negative 7, plus the 4 times the 8, I'll just put them all into little handy containers, which comes to 7 plus 32, but minus the 15, so that will be 24, and that gets a mark. So now it comes to part B. What's the angle between the vectors? Now don't just do it on your calculator and write the final answer down, or you get 0 out of 4. Put in the working. The angle between them will be the scalar product, because the scalar product is equal to the length of one times the length of the other times the cosine of the angle in between. So I'll need their magnitudes. Well, you've got u dot v already, so that means you've got to work out the magnitude of u. So the magnitude of u will be the square root of the squares of the components. I'll just be rigorous here and put in the negative one, but you know yourself, the square of negative one and the square of one is the same. You could even bypass that, because there's only one mark for the final answer, and just put in the squares for the three parts, plus the four squared, plus the negative three squared, and save a little bit of writing. I don't see what's wrong at all with just saying the square of that's one, the square of that's 16, and the square of that's nine, making the magnitude altogether, that's root 26. That certainly gets a mark. Similarly for the magnitude of V. Maybe this time I will just do that. That's going to be 49 plus 64, plus 25, so that will be 9 and 9's 18 and 1 over 1338, that gets a mark, but you just use your calculator. So that means you've got this, you've got 24 over the square root of 26 times the square root of 138, that gets a mark. Now the final answer is just going to be for the angle. There's no need to work that out, because you'd lose a bit of accuracy working it out. You can just do the inverse cos of and leave that the way it is. In fact, you could simplify it a bit because you've got the product of two square roots, which will simply be the square root of the product. That'll save a couple of button presses. That's what's coming next anyway. Press the buttons. And when you press the button, you get 66.380 and so on. Normally with degrees, you give it one decimal place. 66.4 degrees. And doing that gets the last mark. You can, if you wish, put that into radians. Set your calculator in radians. But why would you do that? Unless, of course, it was already accidentally set into radians, in which case you would just put down 15855 and so on. Now, they're accepted 1.16, but I'm going to put 1.159. But if you did put it in radians, you'd have to make sure that it couldn't be confused that you were putting the answer in degrees. So you'd have to make sure you had either the degree sign or not the degree sign and preferably just putting radians after it.